Hello all. In today's video, we are going to continue practicing with inverse variation and direct variation. Remember first that both of them, inverse and direct variation, they represent relationship between two values, x and y, such that when one of the values x, in our case, when x increases, y increases proportionally. There it's about the, the direct variation. And when x increases and y decreases proportionally, there it's the inverse variation. So let me just remind it to you the rule. So direct variation y equals k times x which we say y varies directly with x, and the inverse variation in which y equals k times 1 over x, and we say y varies inversely with x. So let's see. On page 198 in your book, question number 4. Carmen said the table of values shown represents an inverse variation. So from here we can write that y equals k times 1 over x. And remember that k, it will be equals x times y. So from the table, when the table is given to see if it repre if represents an inverse variation or not, we have to find the k, the constant of variation, uh, which will represent the product between x and y, and this one, it has to be the same one. So I will take the first pair of x and y, and I will say k1 equals x times one y, which is 1 times 24, and equals to 24. I will take the second pair of xy values, so k2 equals x times y, so 2 times 12, equals to 24. But you have to check them all, because if one of the values, one of the pairs does not satisfy, then this means that the table will not represent an inverse variation. So it's not enough to check only the first uh, two pairs of uh, x and y. We will check more. So k3 equals x times y, 3 times 8, which is 24, k4 4 times x, which is 24, k5, which is 8 times 3, and it is 24, and the last one, k6 equals 16 times 2, which equals to 32. So, as you can see, one of the constant is different than the others. So here was Carmen's mistake. She didn't check the pairs all. So the table does not represent an inverse variation. In an inverse variation, so we go down and we write y equals k times 1 over x. x equals negative 8. When y is negative 1 over 4. So all we have to do now is to substitute in the equation for x and y given. So y instead of it will put negative 1 over 4 equals the k value, the constant. We don't know it, so keep it k times 1 over x is negative 8. Solve for k, so times negative 8. It will be negative 1 over 4 times negative 8, it is 2, equals to k, so k, it is equals to 2. Then the inverse variation, it will be y equals 2 times 1 over x. What is the value of y? So to find the y, we come back and use the identity we found. So we can write y equals 2 times 1 over the x value, it is given 4. So we substitute with 4. Simplify by 2, it will be y equals 1 over 2 when x equals 4. 
until the truck runs out of the gas, the amount of gas in its fuel tank varies inversely. So let's say amount of gas, I will use the variable G, varies inversely. So G equals K times 1 over number of miles traveled. So miles, I can put miles or we can put D from distance. Model a relationship between the amount of gas in the fuel tank of the trunk and the number of miles traveled by the tank as an inverse variation. And this part of the question already we answer it here. Now, if we take a look here in the picture, it is given 9 gallons of, of gas left. So, we can substitute instead of G, the gas, we will put the 9 equals K times 1 over 135 miles. So, the mile, it's the unit to measure distance. So, we'll put it instead of D and solve for K times 135. So it will be K equals 9 times 135 and this equals 1215. So K is 1215. This is the constant of variation. Now the question is how many gallons of gas left after 225 miles? So the gallons of gas, we don't know it. We'll keep the variable G equals. The K, we just found it. We will substitute 1215 times 1 over for the distance 225. So gas, the gallons equals... 5.4 gallons of gas left. Do the tables of values represent inverse variation? And then we have to explain. Remember that the inverse variation, y equals k times 1 over x, from which k equals x times y. So, I will take the question 14. So, to check if this table represents an inverse variation or not, we have to find the k if it is constant for all of the pairs or not. So, I'm going to take the first one and put k1 equals x times y, which means negative 1 over 4 times negative 9 over 2, and this equals 9 over 8. which is 1.125. I will take the second pair, k2 equals, as we said, x times y, so it's negative 1 over 2, times negative 9, and it will be 9 over 2, which is 4.5. Already we found the first two k's, they are different, which means the table does not represent inverse variation. I will take the second one and in the same way k equals x times y. So we take the first k, 60 times 1 is 60. k2, 30 times 2, it is 60. k3, 3 times 20, 60. K4, 4 times 15, 60. K5, 5 times 12, 60. And K6, 6 times 10, it is 60. As long as the K value, the constant, it's the same for all of the pairs, it means that the table represents an inverse variation. If x and y vary inversely, so we put y equals k times 1 over x. 
and x equals to 3 when y equals. So instead of y, we will put 2 thirds equals k times 1 over, substitute for x with the given value 3. Solve for k, so it will be k equals 2 thirds times 3 equals to 2. So we can write that y equals 2 times 1 over x. What is the value of y? So y equals 2 times when x equals negative 1, 1 over negative 1, then y equals negative 2 when x is negative 1. The electrical current in amperes in a circuit varies directly. So let's say for electrical current, I will use the variable C and varies directly. For the voltage, I will put V. It will be K times V. Here it's about the direct variation. When 15 volts applied, the volt, it's the unit for the voltage. Yes, so then take care, 15, it will be the voltage. The current is 5 amperes. So instead of current, we will put the 5. Equals K times 15. Solve for K over 15. Simplify by 5. It will be K equals 1 over 3. So then the current is 1 third times the voltage. What is the current? So calculate solve for C, which we said is 1 third times voltage 18 volts. So for V, we substitute with 18. Simplify by 3, it will be current equals 18 over 3, it is 6 amperes. The current in an electrical conductor varies inversely as the resistance of the conductor. So for the current, I will use C. And for the resistance, I will put the R. And there it's about the inverse variation. So it will be C equals K times 1 over R. If the current is 12 amperes, so instead of C, we can put the 12. And the resistance is 240 ohms. So K times 1 over 240. Solve for K. It will be K equals 2880. So we can write that current is the K, which we found it 2880, times 1 over the R, the resistance. What is the current? So C equals 2880 times 1. The resistance is 540. Substitute for the R. So the current it will be 5.33 ampere. Let's see more. The wavelengths of the radio wave varies inversely as the frequency. So the length wavelength, I will name it W, varies inversely the frequency. So from here we can write W equals K times 1 over the frequency. A wave width a frequency of 1200 kHz. So instead of frequency, we will substitute with 1200. 
has a length of 300 meters. So the wavelength, it's a 300 meters equals to K. So for K, so times 1,200, we can say that K equals 12 times 3, it's a 36, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So 360,000. Then we can write that the wavelength is the K, which is, we found it, 360,000 times 1 over the frequency. So what is the length of the wave? which means W, which equals 3,060,000 ,060, times 1 over the frequency 800. Simplify the two zeros. So it will be 450. So the wave length it's 450 let's see meters the weight of an object on mars varies directly as its weight on earth so for the weight on mars i'm going to use capital m varies directly the weight on earth so we can write that m equals k times e from earth a person weights 95 pounds on earth so instead of e we will put the 95 weights 38 pounds on mars so here it will be 38 equals k times solve the equation for k so it will be k equals 38 over 95 and the equation it will be m equals k we just found it so substitute 38 over 95 times how much would a 100 pound person weight on Mars. So, weight on Mars, which means we do not know the M, the 100 pounds will represent the weight on Earth. So, on Mars, equals 38 over 95 times 100 pounds and m equals 40 pounds on mars thank you